You know that iconic scene in Jurassic Park, you know, the scene where the T-Rex attacks the kids and roars like, <laughs> well, how would it make you feel if it was covered in feathers? Like a big emu. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. U Tyrannus huali is a newly discovered tyrannosaur species found in northeastern China that lived 60 million years before T. rex. Multiple individuals were found with preserved remains of monofilamentous feathers. Scientists say it would have been like touching long, thick fur, similar to the modern emu. This is the largest feathered dinosaur ever found, and since T. rex is related to this new species, chances are good that T. rex was feathered as well. Sorry guys, but your scaly Godzilla monsters looking less and less likely. If you thought that puberty was a weird time for you, T-Rexes, who lived 66 to 68 million years ago, had a much weirder time. Starting around age 14, they would gain 600 kilos a year or around 2 kilos a day until the age of 18. After which, they would plateau until they died, which typically was around 30. Their exact height is difficult if not near impossible to measure, due to the incompleteness of the fossils. But best guesses put them at around 12 meters in length and at a height of 4 meters at the hips. Starting as a 1-ton lizard and ending up as a 7.7-ton powerhouse, T-Rexes lived fast and died young. And in order for them to grow so exponentially, they had to eat a lot. According to XKCD, one of my favorite webcomics, if a T-Rex was released into the world today, a la Lost World, it would need to consume one human every couple days to sustain itself, requiring around 40,000 calories per day. Alternatively, the estimate it could keep itself going on 80 Big Macs every day. No big surprise, the T-Rex's diet mainly consisted of other dinosaurs, and there's even evidence to suggest incidences of cannibalism. But when Steven Spielberg made Jurassic Park in 1993, there was no proof suggesting that the Tyrannosaurus rex actually hunted live prey. Some scientists even thought that they may have been scavengers, feeding on the carcasses left behind by other meat eaters. A recent discovery by researchers suggests differently, and a T-Rex tooth that had been lodged in the tail vertebrae of a hadrosaur may be the smoking gun. The T-Rex fed with a bite and pull action, effectively tearing flesh and crushing bones in its powerful jaws. By examining the bite marks left in the fossilized pelvis of a triceratops, researchers believe that Tyrannosaurus could bite with up to 3,000 pounds of force. This further supports the suggestion that they hunted and killed their prey. I mean, why would a scavenger need to bite with the force of a small truck? In order to reach the tasty, meaty neck muscles of the Triceratops, researchers believe the T-Rex would actually decapitate their prey, using their powerful jaws to grasp the bony frill and, well, pull and pop their heads right off. Basically, it's the Cretaceous version of pop and open a beer. Using statistical analysis, scientists calculated the top running speeds of five meat-eating dinosaurs. The T-Rex came in dead last. With a top speed of 29 kilometers an hour, the T-Rex just barely beat out a human. Yes, sadly, we'd still get eaten if we don't outmaneuver them, but the Tyrannosaurus is certainly not as fast as the Jeep in Jurassic Park. So another Jurassic Park myth. In the iconic scene, Dr. Grant says, don't move. T-Rex can't see us if we don't move. Implying that T-Rex vision is movement based, but it's just not true. Can you imagine T-Rex bumbling around, running into trees? Due to the front facing position of the eyes, it had an incredible binocular range of 55 degrees and could see with reasonable clarity up to six kilometers away, which would have been even better than hawks. All in the family, right? What animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and make sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching.